Hmm, this fat lady had a bit of a lipo and a facelift, I guess. Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, uh, well it was a long time coming after seeing uh, quite a few of these uh, five digit reference GMT Masters and GMT Masters 2 considering the the ceramic uh, as one, the, the two tone which is a bit more available. Finally, uh, this is the one that followed me home and I know what you're gonna say, I've been adding lots of uh, watches lately, don't worry, some watches are gonna have to leave the, the collection and uh, we're gonna have to streamline this. Uh, but what is this? And uh, I'm sure the vintage nuts are gonna skewer me a little bit or, or quite a lot in the in the comments. This is uh, uh, 1986 or perhaps early 87, I, I think 86. Uh, the uh, serial is uh, in the 9.6 uh, million. 16760. So this is the uh, what is often referenced as the uh, Fat Lady or the uh, Sophia Loren. It is the first of the GMT Master 2s um, replacing the reference uh, 16750 and the transitional 16700. Maybe uh, I think the 700 was produced at the same time uh, as this. So what this introduced and is the reason why it's uh, it's uh, thicker. Uh, it's the uh, individually adjustable uh, GMT hand and uh, the uh, hour hand this time uh, you can adjust it uh, backwards and uh, forwards in a one hour increment. So it's the travel function and uh, you didn't have that before. Before that uh, the two hands were synchronized with the uh, red hand being um, on a 24 hour scale while the uh, regular hand on the 12 hour scale so you would just have to uh, turn the bezel to uh, get your second time zone so here you can track three time zone also here you have the sapphire crystal which you also had on the transitional 16700 uh, i believe uh, you have the introduction of the the coke uh, bezel and in general, these watches had a larger, slightly larger case also than the following reference, the 16710, which is much better known. Also, this one normally would have a larger crown guard, although here, uh, yeah, there's been quite a bit of polishing. The watch looks almost like a, like a new watch. Been quite a bit of polishing, so we, we were losing a bit of that uh, thickness, a bit of lugs, and certainly some of the, the crown guards. Um, Everything looks actually very, <laughs> almost la la like new. Uh, the bracelet, uh, you can see here, uh, the, the, I can't really show you on the, this camera angle. A uh, little bit of sag, but it's very comfortable. Uh, we'll come to that in a, in a minute. And uh, the other uh, obvious thing here is that we have a service dial with the stick marker. So you see the GMT Master 2, the 2 here is only two vertical bars while Typically, you would have uh, uh, little horizontal bars on top and at the bottom. So this is sometimes referred to as an error dial. I think what really happened is that uh, towards the end of the 16710, the, the five-digit reference of the GNT Master, uh, this dial uh, started to appear in um, 2006, 2007, uh, certainly. And um, Probably they ended the, the run and still had a lot of these dials uh, in, uh, in storage. And so when you would send your watch for service, you, when you would send your GMT Master 2 of whatever year for service, uh, they would replace it. So in this case here, normally you would have uh, an indication at the bottom that it's a tritium dial and it's been replaced for a super luminova dial. It's got that uh, stick dial, which you know, sometimes commands a little bit of a premium. Uh, some people don't really buy into it. Uh, you know how the Rolex vintage market is uh, dissected and segmented. Uh, but I thought it was kind of cool to have a, a, a stick dial. So obviously the vintage nuts will, will hate this. Uh, you want to have everything original. The service dials are no bueno. Service hands, no bueno. Uh, but this is uh, what it is. Um, it, it Actually, I quite like it. I quite like to have a, a bit of a less common reference uh, having a 16 
7.6.0, but very usable, having the, the stick dial service uh, dial and hands. Uh, the loom is uh, as, as good as ever. I just had it on the last night and uh, you can see the loom all night long. So how did I buy it? Why did I buy it? Uh, I saw this on the uh, buy sell uh, app where individual and individuals and uh, shops professionals alike uh, advertise and uh, you know I would have half uh, a mind for it I, I kind of went to uh, to check it out you know throughout my watch safaris I had tried on some 16 750s 16 710s I always thought I would end up with a, a very late series uh, 16 710 2006 maybe 2007 maybe a coke with a stick dial or maybe a, maybe a, a, a Pepsi uh, or even go for the, the ceramic uh, two-tone, which is a better price, I think, good good value. And uh, but yesterday I went to see a few watches, and uh, and then I went to see this one. And uh, yeah, as I showed you, everything looks uh, spick and span. Probably gone to to service. I would assume in its tenth year uh, anniversary, someone brought it uh, for for service. It got uh, the service dial, everything replaced, refreshed, uh, polished. Lost a lot of the original character, of course, but uh, it was kept uh, very, uh, you know, use, you ready for, for use. And you see the beautifully satinated bracelet uh, here. The bracelet code, at least that I believe is the, the correct for the, the, the period. It would be uh, 78360 with the 501 end link. I think some of them have a 501B. Uh, again, vintage guys uh, can uh, comment uh, below whether this is correct or not. But the bracelet is incredibly well made. Of, of course, it's uh, not solid and links, but uh, it, it feels good. And um, the clasp uh, is beautiful. It's a Prussian clasp, all, fa all style with a lot of uh, position to um, anchor the, the bracelet to get the right fit and uh, you have a nice positive snap and it just feels good and uh, as you can see there's a good definition there on the on the clasp so it isn't very uh, lovely uh, close to original uh, condition so yeah comment in the in, in the comment section wh what you think about these crown guards and uh, the the polishing here there's still a bit of a bevel I don't know if it's the original uh, or, or not I'm pretty sure you we've lost quite a bit of uh, metal here, but um, I thought it looked good. It was functional. Uh, I like this mix, as I said, of the uh, reference that's not s as common as the 16710. Inside you have the caliber 3085. So these um, these watches ran from 83 to 88. This one is an 86, or so rather late in the in the run. Uh, they all had the 3085 caliber, which you would find also in the 16550 uh, uh, reference. Explorer 2. The caliber was later improved uh, against shock, again, anti -magnet uh, magnetism, uh, and for accuracy in the 3185 version. And the later version in 2006 2007 would be the 3186. But so here we have the 3085, which is uh, actually incredibly accurate uh, so far. Uh, I've say, said it yesterday, and uh, uh, a day later, it's, uh, it's still pretty much on zero within uh, one second. And as I said, it's the first caliber to have uh, where you can set the two hands apart. So, of course, you have uh, the crown. The winding is smooth and uh, at the first position. You can uh, just change the hour hand backwards and forwards without uh, changing the, um, without having to, to stop the, the, the time. So when you travel an hour ahead, an hour back, there you go. And, uh, you know, the date will change through uh, this uh, fashion. I'm not going to stop the, the watch because I want to check how accurate it is. So far, it is very accurate. And the bezel, of course, you have the Coke bezel, probably a replacement uh, bezel. It looks so fresh, so crisp. Kind of like what I like about this watch. It, uh, I like to have a nice watch. And uh, 
there will be always time to uh, get a, a more vintage accurate one uh, th this one here it's the mix of the, the vintage and uh, and uh, and the modern the, the serviced uh, replacement parts so you can see uh, a bit more underbelly on this than you would on the uh, on the previous uh, caliber uh, versions on the 16750s and uh, yeah, most importantly, the price, obviously, because um, of the replacement dial, uh, what's much, much lower, uh, and I get managed to grind them down quite a bit more. I bought this from uh, sort of a high street uh, seller. It's uh, a chain of uh, Asian high-end pawn shops, uh, if you want. Uh, they, they do jewelry and they do uh, Rolex, uh, mostly. Uh, it felt good. The price was uh, was okay. And why did I buy this one and not one of the other ones I, I saw? I, I can't really quite tell you. I think it had the elements that uh, I personally like. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will disagree in the in the comments. And I uh, and I wanted to uh, compare it. And we'll do videos about that to um, to the Tudor versions. You can see how the design language is uh, is close. Uh, if this was called uh, the fat lady, well, this is the fat lady boy. Uh, <laughs> certainly, you can see a, a huge, huge difference. It's not even in the same ballpark. But there's something very satisfying uh, with the, the mass of the, the Tudors. I don't knock it. And also, it's a 200 meter diver, uh, first and foremost. So it's very different uh, at its heart, at its core. It's not made to be a GMT. Uh, it's just got the uh, great addition of the GMT manufacturer movement. That's very cool, uh, very beautiful, beautiful uh, bevels. Uh, very nice. But uh, yeah, the mass can be a bit, uh, a, a bit tiring. And uh, lately, I was lucky enough to get uh, the root beer version. So it's cool. I get the root beer, the Pepsi, and uh, and the Coke. Sometimes you gotta let the watches come to you. You know, you can't really force it. It's gotta be the right day, the right time, the right price, and the right configuration. And uh, let me give you a, a wrist shot. Obviously, it wears. Even though it is called uh, the Fat Lady or the Sophia Loren, it is actually ultra slim. You barely see a difference between this and the. Uh, 16 uh, 7 tenths so uh, at first i was wondering if it was not a mistake and if it was not a 16 7 10 and it might be you know uh, again experts will uh, chime in perhaps uh, but um, i watched a few videos some of them look pretty much li like this others have a bit more a uh, bit, bit different uh, looks I think in those days uh, it was not ex to the same. Uh, watches were not done to the same exacting standards as uh, as today. But obviously it wears just amazing, beautiful, very silky smooth. Um, I, I like the clasp. The bracelet is beautiful. And uh, I want to experience a bit the difference between this and the, the Tudors. See uh, what has to stay, what has to to go. I wanted to get the, a bit the feel for for it the feel for the the vintage uh, my first rolex was um, uh, so my vintage so mid 2000 explorer 2 well i think 2003 2004 it was uh, all original condition um, had been serviced but nothing replaced uh, with, so with all the scratches which was just fine uh, you know you don't feel precious with it i enjoyed it very very much it was uh, really a lot of fun and then uh, you know I made a profit when I when I sold it. I kind of got tired of the uh, of the look, and I wanted to experience uh, something different. And there you go. Now I have the the Coke, which um, everybody wants to see again into the uh, ceramic uh, era. Probably it will uh, it will come eventually. Maybe Tudor will do it. Maybe Rolex will do it. Uh, but um, they will not do it the same way as this. The Tudors will be thicker. The Rolex will be uh, a, lo a lot more luxurious, a lot more in your face. Uh, I, I like this, is a, it's a bit more under the radar and uh, really a beautiful, beautiful watch. So let me know a bit uh, what you think about, uh, about this uh, in, the, in the comments and um, any, any, yeah, any questions, uh, let me know. We're gonna see this watch again in uh, further videos. Thanks for watching guys, bye bye.